every complex situation contains within itself conflicting elements, which therefore destabilize the situation. And therefore, the situation cannot go on indefinitely. It breaks down into something else within which those conflicts are dissolved or assuaged. But then, of course, in the new situation, you get new conflicts. Uh, and so it goes on indefinitely. And this, Hegelians and following them Marxists think, gives us the key to history, to understanding historical change, the dialectical process. Hello, Sublation Media viewers. It's me again, Douglas Lane. And this Critical Cuts video is an explanation of the first preface of Hegel's Science of Logic. At Sublation Media's Patreon, we are hosting a monthly discussion group on Hegel's big book. And from here on out, these Critical Cuts videos will feature an explanation of Hegel every month. In fact, every month there will be two videos, one public-facing and one for the Patreon. Sign up on Patreon for the second Critical Cuts video on the second preface from The Science of Logic, which is out now. I've always been distracted by love and sex. Since puberty, I've had difficulty being reasonable and disciplined. I've had difficulty keeping my eye on the ball, remembering to dot my I's and cross my T's, and keeping my house in order, because my mind would wander. After puberty, I became a bit girl crazy. Even worse, as I grew older, I found that the problem of women and love is so confusing that I can't even keep that part of my life in clear order. During my freshman year of high school, for example, I found that I couldn't decide if I was enamored with a particular girl or with girls in general. Specifically, in 1985, I couldn't decide if my interest in Laura Rayburn was driven by Laura Rayburn herself or if what was really driving me was some inner impulse, some sort of hormonal reaction, or even worse, some cultural imperative. Was I really in love or was I being tricked by my biology into wanting to copulate and reproduce? Was I really in love or was I merely following the instructions, trying to get ahead, attempting to do what was expected of me? What eventually came to bother me was how my head was cluttered by assumptions. A girl with long legs and blonde hair was apparently desirable. A girl with small feet and a soft voice was beautiful. And I thought that's what I wanted. The degree to which a girl might fit with these assumptions was the degree to which she would be the one, my true love. But then again, these assumptions weren't my own. They were given. At the age of 14, long legs and a soft voice were things I had only experienced at a distance or on television. I didn't really know if these qualities were what I really wanted. And later on, after I got close up and personal with a few girls, I began to doubt whether getting what I wanted was really what I wanted after all. Certainly, it was part of it, but so was not getting what I wanted. Love, finding and knowing and having and being loved by an object of my affection became very confusing. Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel fell in love in 1787. 25 years later, in 1812, he wrote about this love and what it meant in a book called The Science of Logic. What Hegel fell in love with was not a woman or a man, but a time, an historical event. In his preface, he described the significance of his love. He said that Germany had undergone a complete transformation. The French Revolution and the philosophy of Kant had sent the world and his own heart reeling. What he loved was freedom and politics and revolution. But in 2023, all of that seems very remote and obscure. Besides, I'd rather talk about girls. For example, let's talk about Sandy in the musical Grease. Sandy was the kind of girl that any red-blooded American boy would fall in love with, the kind of girl that our heteronormative culture demanded that every American boy should fall in love with. Blonde hair, blue eyes, a demure smile, long enough legs, etc. In the movie, the greaser and hoodlum, Danny Zuko, did fall for her, but the process wasn't simple or easy. The process, the pathway to love, wasn't straightforward and direct, but it ended up being dialectical. It matched the process Hegel claims that reason must go through to discover truth. It matched the kind of logic that the preface to the science of logic promises will be fully explained in the rest of the book. To begin with, Zuko approaches Sandy as if she is merely an instantiation of a formal set of criteria. Symmetrical face? Check. Full-breasted? Check. Female? Check. 
but approaching Sandy as if she is merely filling a role in a formal system of desire not only leads to rejection, but demonstrates Zuko's own mechanical and shallow understanding of love and sex. In fact, it is only through failure that Zuko has any chance of love. In the same way, Hegel claims that it is only through negation, failure, and destruction that reason can instantiate its own true understanding. Hegel wrote, The understanding determines and holds the determinations fixed. Reason is negative and dialectical because it resolves the determinations of the understanding into nothing. It is positive because it generates the universal and comprehends the particular therein. If Zuko is to act as a subject who understands his love, we might say that what he does initially is determine what his criteria for love is and consider these standards to be fixed and natural, to be universal and immutable. However, by pursuing Sandy, he is forced into reason as her rejection, her resistance to being treated as a mere appearance of an abstraction, reduces him and her to nothing. He is treating her as if she has no substance of her own, as if his own understanding is all that there is. Likewise, her refusal of him reduces him and his desire to nothing as well. It is only by recognizing themselves in the failure of the other that each one is able to take up the truth of their situation and transcend the impasse, first in a car and then presumably in bed. What Hegel points out in his preface to the science of logic is that we have reached a stage in history where love, real love, seems impossible. Or to say it again with its original meaning, Hegel writes, we have lost our understanding of the substance that gives us meaning. We have literally stripped the world of its support and in the process we have lost life full and sensuous and meaningful life itself. He wrote, The ontology, rational psychology, cosmology, yes, even natural theology of former times. Where is now to be heard any mention of them? Or who would venture to mention it? Inquiries, for instance, into the immateriality of the soul, into efficient and final causes, where should these still arouse any interest? Even the former proofs of the existence of God are cited only for their historical interest or for purposes of edification and uplifting the emotions. The fact is that there no longer exists any interest either in the form or the content of metaphysics or in both together. If it is remarkable when a nation has become indifferent to its constitutional theory, to its national sentiments, its ethical customs and virtues, it is certainly no less remarkable when a nation loses its metaphysics when the spirit which contemplates its own pure essence is no longer a present reality. But what we should keep in mind as we read the science of logic is that it is only through the loss of metaphysics that Hegel thinks that Germany and the world can self-construe a new and objective understanding of science. We might say that it is only through misunderstanding and the loss of metaphysics that we have a chance to return to the truth of our being on a new level. We should tell each other the following. Come on, baby. Give me a second chance. <laughs>